A very good evening to you and welcome to this live virtual forum on this African Anti-Corruption Day. Now this year will mark the fifth edition of the African Anti-Corruption Day and it's being commemorated under the theme Regional Economic Communities, critical actors in the implementation of the African Union Convention on Preventing and Combating Corruption. Now African states have indeed made significant efforts in the fight against corruption, including the establishment of national laws and the creation of anti-corruption agencies. But of course, much more still needs to be done. Well, joining me to discuss the importance of this day are my guests, Dr. Abdi Malim, a commissioner at the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, Alexander Muteti, the Senior Assistant Director of Public, uh, at, uh, Public Prosecutions at the ODPP, uh, Sylvester Kini, the Deputy Auditor General, Finance Audit Services at the Office of the Auditor General, and Dr. Kevit Desai, the Principal Secretary at the State Department for East African Community, Ministry of EAC and Re Regional development. Thank you all, gentlemen, uh, you. for joining us on this critical day. Uh, Dr. Malam, I'll begin with you. And here in Kenya, the celebration is being spearheaded by the Kenya Leadership Integrity Forum. Tell us a little bit more about this and why this is such an important day to Kenyans. Uh, good evening, viewers. Um, thank you very much. Um, we are very uh, pleased as Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission and also as the uh, CLIF, which is um, the Forum for Leadership Integrity, as you mentioned. Uh, we are here to really um, uh, celebrate and join the rest of African uh, countries in the celebration of the African Anti-Corruption um, uh, Day, which is today. And I would like to uh, bring to your uh, attention that this program is uh, spearheaded by CLIF. CLIF is, uh, as we mentioned, the, uh, the Kenya Leadership Integrity Forum, which is an association of stakeholders across the country, from the executive, the, the legislative, the judiciary, the private sector, uh, the civil societies, and all, and also the very important uh, people like the media and the religious people. Now, this is actually um, a stakeholder uh, agency that is spearheaded by ESCC as the secretariat, and its work is really to join hands and fight against corruption. The war against corruption cannot be fought only by ESCC. So we have met this stakeholder, and our chairman is the Attorney General uh, of the Republic of Kenya, um, uh, uh, who is uh, the, the chairman of that, and uh, I will talk more about it as we uh, proceed in the course of the day. Thank All you. All right, uh, Alexander, I'll bring you in at this point. Where do you think we are as Kenya when it comes to the fight against corruption? As I mentioned, uh, many African nations have made significant strides. Where are we? Well, thank you, Sumitri. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, what I would say from where I sit, I think as a country, many people may not believe it, but then um, the fact is we have made very serious strides in the fight against corruption, and we are not done with it yet. But um, one of the things that we must all realize is that the fight against corruption is not an easy job. So there are processes that we must go through. We must ensure uh, protection of human rights, of suspects and accused persons, and everybody who is in the justice chain. But I could say with confidence that as a country, we are on the right footing. And I think no, none other than His Excellency, the President, has made it very clear. The government is committed to eradicating the vice so it's a matter of time before everybody starts crying around that you are targeting one of our own because i believe once we start now getting the convictions that everybody yearns for then that's when people start realizing how serious this fight is but it is on and we are happy with the game all right, Sylvester, do you agree with that, that uh, the government does have the will to fight corruption? We're constantly seeing um, various government officials in, uh, deep in corruption. Uh, what are your views based on what Alexander has said? Sylvester, can you hear me? I think you may have muted uh, your microphone. 
Thank you. I'm sorry for that. Yes, um, I have heard what my colleague has said, and um, uh, war against corruption, it is war which has to be fought and which has to be accomplished. Uh, from our perspective, as the Office of the Auditor General, we have really done our best. We have produced uh, volumes of reports which have been really discussed by the parliament and recommendations have been given and some of the recommendations have, re, uh, have uh, resorted to some people arranged in court. Yes, I agree with my friends, uh, the war on corruption is still on process, but still there is need also to act on some of the recommendations mm. which have been made by parliament. Parliament has made several recommendations, and unless all the recommendations have been fully implemented as Parliament has uh, given in the resolution, then it, it is still uh, a long way to go. So uh, I agree, yes, there is a lot of progress, but there's still more to be done. All right, more on that shortly. Uh, Kevin, what has the impact of corruption been on the region? Well, indeed, it's a daunting challenge. It um, is multifaceted. It creates challenges with respect to both the economic and social value proposition in terms of its overall, overall development. It creates a great distortion of markets, markets that would otherwise be potential both from an economic and a jobs perspective. It creates a challenge with respect to finding ways in which we're able to keep our development path steady. Indeed, it, 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 it's ingrained within the constant uh, value proposition we create by way of social, economic and environmental challenges. And I believe that this has a multifaceted challenge with respect to our development purpose. And where does Kenya lie in comparison to our neighboring countries when it comes to the war on corruption, Kevin? I think that indeed we have, by way of our overall development, our overall engagement within the East African community, within the African Union Convention, we have made tremendous progress. And this is further now aggregated by way of our involvement in various initiatives and uh, programs which include the East African community as well as the um, uh, what we see with respect to ECOWAS as well as SADAC and that influencing role which plays a complementary capacity towards our internal challenge and uh, our ability to address corruption within within our country but I think that what is also very important here is that that by way of harmonizing legislations and policies and regula regulations and other key structures, we are able to create the necessary framework to promote that aggregation as we go along. All right. Uh, as the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, um, Dr. Malim, what sort of strategies has the EACC put in place to fight corruption here in Kenya? Uh, thank you. Um, I am very happy that my colleagues have mentioned the impact and uh, the uh, state where we are at the moment in the fight against corruption. I agree with Mr. Muteti that we are really doing a good job, and um, uh, but the war is still too uh, long to be won. First of all, because of the, the multifacetedness of the uh, corruption, the complexity, the new trends of uh, types of corruption that's actually coming uh, with the modern technology, EACC, and also the number of uh, cases that we get, we have adopted a strategy of trying to see what is the best way to make uh, uh, impact in the fight against corruption. Point number one, what we are really at the moment focusing on is high impact cases. Uh, high impact cases, these are uh, where the case actually involves a, a more prominent person uh, as the uh, suspect. Number two, the amount of money that is really uh, uh, taking place which is involved. 
for instance, and, uh, some of the major, as we have seen, the major conduit for this type of corruption is uh, major uh, national and uh, county government's projects that succeed are multi-billion shillings. So we also look for such. And then also we, we look at the, what is the, uh, um, you know, the, the uh, status of that type of, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, crime, and the image of the, um, the the people. What is the really a stake for the Kenyans? There are Kenya, there are people. There are places where the when you look at it, you know, the, uh, there's a high interest in the case rather than what does. That's one which we use. Number two, and which is really also giving a lot of um, um, impact, is uh, asset tracing and recovery. And this is really uh, very very important because at the end of the day, you steal the properties or you do corruption because you want to enjoy the benefits that you got. But this trend of asset tracing and recovery really helps uh, preventing that. So, so the, the money that you have stolen will never be used for your leisure. So we recover from you all that we thought you have gotten through the method of you have used, whether it is uh, um, um, the stolen uh, public property or other ways. So we recover that money and it's really worked very well and it's really paying a lot of uh, dividend. Number three is actually um, engage and uh, really one of the most important uh, stakeholder, as I mentioned, the cliff are the publics and the various agencies that we collaborate. We have really to give prevention, increase their public education and awareness, so the, 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 the public um, themselves become the watchdog. They cannot sit behind and wait. And when we carried some research, we found out of 10 people who actually uh, uh, experienced corruption, only one reported. Only one. And why do you think that is? This, is it this because is, this uh, is, the, the public, members of the public know that um, we don't really have a, a working system in place to fight corruption? I, I think one of the things that, you know, um, uh, what is making the people, sometimes they say, oh, we don't know how to report, but we have really put in place various, and I will talk as we uh, go uh, progress in the, in the, in the, in the, the, the course of the, uh, this uh, program, and that's why we have put in place a very, very robust and pragmatic uh, prevention strategies where we equip the local people, the county people, the, uh, the ministries through the cleave so that at least every agency is aware what is, what is supposed to be done and if there's a citizen who has seen. By the way, it is your responsibility to report any crime that you see. So keeping quiet, it's really a criminal by itself. So it's people sometimes say, oh, we don't know where to report, or, you know, we don't know, maybe they're afraid, but we are really trying to put off that. And finally, uh, the other aspect which you have used as a strategy, which is the fourth one, is partnership. Uh, ESCC cannot do itself. And I'm very happy uh, um, our PSC is uh, from the Minister of East Africa, is, uh, East African community is here. We have made such uh, strategy and partnership within and also within the region and internationally. And this is really very, very important because corruption is cross-border activity. You know, it is really um, uh, taking money from Africa to Europe or from Kenya to other parts of Africa. And right. so we have really to have this type of partnership, which has really given us a lot. And we encourage uh, and continue to, to really give us. And I'm happy the East African community is actually uh, coming up with these uh, uh, protocols and other issues to help. And also the African Union, which is really um, the uh, appointed this day for celebration. Those are those four key areas are our strategy in the fight against corruption, just to mention a few. Oh. Oh, Smithy, right. I, I yeah. just wanted to emphasize here that indeed uh, this collective approach is a solution. It's innovative in that uh, this is indeed a social problem and it cuts across so many different kinds of stakeholders and therefore, you know, all stakeholders need to be jointly responsible mm -hmm. and jointly act uh, for the, uh, the ability to address it. This then is further compounded by the East African states and partner states Amongst various features that support what we're trying to do at CLIF is, is indeed um, the East African community and its treaty, which really expresses a, a determination towards addressing aspects of governance as well as um, human rights and democracy mm -hmm. and law. And this then filters into additional support by way of individual countries, not only harmonizing policies, legislations and regulations, but creating a, a determined sense of the importance of addressing corruption, especially with respect to transnational opportunities. Right, right. Okay, there, there is a point I'll make. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, Alexander, what are some of the opportunities that you perhaps see that have not been capitalized on in this uh, fight against corruption? Thank you. Uh, one of the things I would say is this. Um, 
we have institutions, multiple institutions that are charged with fighting corruption. But I think very little is given to them when it comes to uh, resource allocation and also the media uh, kind of uh, uh, outreach that you need to have. Why do I say so? For instance, when you finance one agency of government that is charged with fighting corruption and you do not give equivalent or near equivalent of resource allocation to other sister agencies, mm. then I can tell you, you are engaging in what I would call the battle of pygmies, where one pygmy thinks is taller than the others. The opportunity that I see from our perspective as prosecutors is this. The office of the DPP currently as constituted, we have spread out to the entire country. We have actually complied with the constitutional dictate of devolution of service. So that a man sitting in Manera witnessing a corruption-related offense can, within a very short time, relay that information to those that must know. A man sitting in uh, Busia can do the same. A woman sitting in Kuala can do the same. So we have the opportunity in the sense that we have enough human capital at the moment that can help us fight corruption. Mm. So all we need to do is prioritize resource allocation to the agencies that we really want to, uh, to, to fight corruption. But let me emphasize one thing. Justice is not like a plate of uh, rice that you just walk into a kitchen. Within five minutes, you have something on your table. It is a chain. It takes time, resources, and it also requires some patience. So that when people view the agencies that are fighting corruption as being not vigilant enough, they should also be fair to us. Because I can today make a decision to prosecute someone. But it doesn't lie in my province to decide whether this man is guilty or not. Right. So I have to involve the judiciary and many other actors. So the idea is resource allocation, prioritization of what we are doing, and then making sure we've got every cog more. Okay, thanks. Uh, Sylvester, I'll bring you in in just a moment. Yes. But uh, Abdi would just like to make a point yes. related to that. Go yeah, ahead. Thank you. I just want to add to what my colleague um, Mr. Mucheti has said. I think some of the opportunities that really we are not implementing adequately is we have a minister of ICT. And one of the best ways in fighting corruption is cutting that chain of human to human contact. If we automate all government services, that will really help a lot. So you don't need to limit uh, uh, Mr. Muteti to do something. You do online and the service will be provided to you and there you will not able to get, uh, even know who Muteti is. The second thing which is very, which I think is also, we really need to, with the, with the, with the help of the legislature, uh, try to put the some of the laws that are still loose, for instance, the, when fighting corruption, and we look at chapter six, this is still a lot which needs to be done. We really need to capitalize on that, improve on the, on, the, on the capacity and the way we can able to uh, use that one, which has been somehow, with all due respect, watered down by, from the time it was uh, proposed. And then finally, I think we have adequately put in place, with the, of course, with the, with, the, with the assistance of the help of the, uh, the head of state, the multi-agency. I think this is, an, uh, this is an instrument which we can use, an institution where all the uh, law enforcement and the intelligence agencies are involved. If we really put our resources together and the way Mr. Mucheri said with adequate resourcing we can able to use this and we can fight the corruption easily. Thank All you. Right, Samiti, I just wanted to compliment this further too okay. on the one stop. Um, yeah. I mean specifically on on the business indicators and we've seen some great innovations by way of our ability to register land titles electronically and automate this process. We've seen consistent efforts by government to automate the process of registering businesses 
and also the entire processes with respect to Im export and import of um, goods. And I think that we're beginning to see a great deal of automation within this scope, creating interactiveness and openness, mm. and thereby preventing corruption. Okay, all right, thank you for that. Uh, Sylvester, let me uh, bring you in now. Uh, we do often hear about the EACC fighting corruption and the Office of uh, the Director of Public Prosecutions, but tell us what the Office of the Auditor General is doing in this fight. What action are you taking? Or your office? Thank you very much. The Office of the Auditor General is actually um, given a mandate as per the Constitution, Article 229. And that article, uh, Article 229, gives the mandate of the Auditor General to audit all public entities which are funded with the public funds. So the first thing is the Office of the Auditor General publishes and publicizes audit reports, both in electronic and also in print media. That is a major breakthrough because everybody, including uh, Nation Media Group, Every day, it actually has to carry some reports, which is very important, and it is a deterrent measure. Also, we make uh, various recommendations to reduce corruption. Even before our audit reports are finalized, we usually have put a lot of recommendations to our entities, and that one has also reduced corruption. We also establish uh, what we call a follow-up mechanism on the implementation because public accounts committee, public Invest investment committee and other uh, 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 agencies, when they give their reports, they are recommendations. So we have to make ensure that these implementations have been carried out as per the uh, requirement of the report of parliament and where there are deviations, we report that the recommendations have not been carried out. We have continuous presence in our counties. Today, when you go to every county, we have 11 hub offices, and those offices, they actually they are charged with the responsibilities of like three to four counties. So our presence is felt everywhere. We have also actually what we call a whistleblowing line in our office. Now citizen, anybody, who has, who has actually spotted, who has encountered corruption, there's a line, outline, to call. And what is very important, and I, I think it's important, I tell the public here, we have engaged what we call citizen uh, engagement accountability framework, mm -hmm. whereby because citizens are everywhere and they know the projects which are being implemented by the national government, by the county government, they are able to report where they will see there's corruption, there's wastage, and we are able to fast track and flag out that matter and we follow. And more important, we have been able to engage with our colleagues, CSCC, DCI, uh, and DPP. We have been coming into some collaboration whereby some of we do some joint audits, especially where we have forensic audits. Okay. And I think that one to some extent it has really played a very major role uh, fight against corruption. All right, thanks so much for that. Now, of course, um, we, we're talking about corruption on a grand scheme, but we also see corruption on a much smaller scale in our everyday lives. Uh, Abdi, what is being done to address uh, the small-scale corruption, uh, handing over that 500 shillings to a police officer to get away from uh, a traffic offence? Um, because really, a lot of people tend to think that corruption is just the way of life in Kenya. It is how you just get through uh, the tough times. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I am very happy that you have mentioned that because many a time we are told uh, uh, where are you all, always going for the small fish? Why not the big fish? But uh, in, in our perception, in our, in our, uh, in our mode of uh, brandy, we don't really look corruption as, although we have got the stake high stakeholding, uh, what you call the high impact cases, we look at every corruption as corruption. And um, if, you, if you start learning taking 50 shillings, 
believe me, you will also take 50 million at the end of the day because you are just trying to coach yourself a small amount as you get you are given opportunity, they would also steal 50 million. Let me give you the, the image of when you talk about that 50 shillings which a policeman takes on the road. Here is a policeman takes a 50 shillings bribe from a vehicle which is fully highly overcrowded and with overcrowding which is almost a few kilometers later after he took the 50 uh, shillings, the vehicle overturns and 50 Kenyans are dead. Their money is small but the impact is not. And this is really what we want the Kenyan citizens, not to give in to requests of asking for bribe and, oh, you know, you, or you ask them why you, but it is the normal. Why, should, why has an evil become normal? Because we have made it. We have made it to be normal and we want every Kenyan really to stand up and say no to corruption, even if it is on the road or where, and believe me, you will one day be, be successful. And I just want to mention, uh, as earlier I mentioned, that there's a law, there's a sort of, um, uh, a sort of what you call liturgy in reporting. Uh, ESCC has 11 regional offices, uh, the center, but we are also present at 50 uh, Huduma centers. Mm -hmm. And we have online, uh, what you can report anonymously without anybody knowing. And we're very happy that the Kenyans who are really doing uh, this work and uh, publicizing and the, the media and everybody else. So the issue of this small, uh, small token type of uh, corruption, which people say it is a small fish, is not small fish. It denies that child who is supposed to register for his birth certificate for the, for, for the examination. And we have seen many children lose because they want just that corruption because they cannot get that 50, 50 shillings which is there. So we fight corruption, whether it is 50 shillings or 50 million or a billion, because it is an evil and it is denying that citizen's right. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, Kevin, tell us. Um, yes. Uh, who is that? If you allow me. Yeah, go if ahead. You, if go you ahead. allow me. Just to come in, sure. um, there is one thing that my colleague from the ESC has said, yeah. which needs to be really the theme that Kenyans should take for this year <clears throat> and years to come. We have reached a point where now the fight against corruption should not be viewed as a government responsibility. Sure. Right. It is a societal responsibility and we have to do serious cultural change in terms of how we approach matters corruption. For instance, if for you to ask your son or daughter to go and pick a bread from the next shop, you've got to ask them, okay, go pick a bread, but then on the side, you have these two shillings for you to buy a sweet. That is corruption. And, and that's the thing we need to talk about very frankly, so that the Kenyans who cry for what we would call redemption from the devil of uh, this uh, corruption thing should know it is their responsibility, much as it is government's responsibility to wipe out corruption. And they must say no to it and make sure every action that they take is geared towards that. Otherwise, we will just be singing, you know, a musical kind of chairs mm -hmm. game. You, you're saying government is not doing this, government is not doing this. What are you doing as a person? Correct. Because who is this who puts a matatu on the road and every day tells the conductor and the driver, drop 50 shillings where you find them? And that you start complaining when people die that officers are not working. Why are you facilitating them? All if right. you must be arrested and charged, that should be it. Face the music if you must. Do you, Thank do, you. do you think it's too late for us as a society to change that sort of a mindset? Uh, are we not too uh, deep-rooted in our ways? No. Not at all. I can tell you for free, if we went down and looked at our education curriculum, for example, we are now talking about competence-based uh, curriculum. What is it that we are teaching these children who are coming up? We can intervene at that stage and tell them in unequivocal terms that corruption is not our way. And there will be leaders who will emerge from that team and will fight this thing to the end. 
Okay. But we can keep talking about it for the years that we would want to, but achieve nothing. All right. Okay, Kevin, let me uh, bring you into this. Um, tell us, what is the African Union Convention on Preventing and uh, Combating Corruption? Well, indeed, it's a, an apex effort with respect to addressing rampant, rampant and political corruption, preventing and detecting, as well as um, eradicating corruption, promoting that regional consensus, both from a public sector as well as private sector. Within this context, it also supports other frameworks of cooperation, which include um, RECs like um, the East African Community, the ECOWAS, SADAC, complements their capabilities towards ensuring that they are able to create necessary frameworks and structures within individual economic states and partner states. Within this context, if you look at EAC yeah. and very closely linked to the uh, African Union Convention on Prevention of Combating Corruption, several initiatives have been developed, which include through the treaty, which espouses both governance, democracy, law, accountability, transparency, and social justice, promoting equal and uh, gender opportunity and human rights. But within that framework too, and further Aggregation takes place by way of a draft EAC protocol on good governance and access of justice, as well as an EAC integrity and anti-corruption bill 2019. And at the grassroots level, in order to really promote anti-corruption, are structures like the one-stop border posts within partner states, which mirror one another and are an innovation by way of ensuring that they harmonize all aspects of uh, uh, transboundary movement of people as well as trade. And this is supported by various other technology systems like the regional electronic device tracking systems which ensure that NTBs are mitigated but at the same time their ability to ensure that there's a flow of goods with the minimal challenges faced uh, with respect to corruption and the entire automation of the uh, transboundary and uh, transnational trade systems. So all of this has an implication right from, you know, grassroots level all the way to creating that framework in support of national policies, legislations, regulations. What it's also trying to do through the 16 sector councils is to promote a standardization so as to ensure that that harmonization is measurable, it's able to be implemented and that indeed uh, partner states are developing capacities which are harmonized uh, throughout the entire region. Th this plays a significant role in creating a, a structure, a, system a systemic intervention in order to address the challenge of corruption under one roof of partner states and at the same time benchmark and be able to further promote the necessary innovation and uh, cooperation. All right. Uh, S Sylvester, with all these efforts that are being put in place locally here in Kenya and in the region uh, as a whole, do you foresee uh, a corruption-free Kenya realistically? Thank you very much. Um, as, I, as, I, as I had indicated before, corruption really, it, it, it has a long way to go. Mm. But the from my perspective and the perspective of the office, there's need actually to enforce the, what we can say, there are some aspects of the constitution which are very clear. Article 10 is very clear about the national values and principles of governance. Here we are talking about the transparency, accountability, integrity, sustainable development, and all those things. Ideally, if these issues are implemented, and they are enabling legislations, if they are implemented to the latter, it can take us far. Article 73, we don't have to go very far. Principles of leadership and integrity. Accountability for public, for, to the public for decisions and actions. I have heard what my colleagues have said there. If we have a national conversation 
about the issues of corruption. And every sector, public or private, takes this personal responsibility to spread this gospel about anti-corruption. This culture change which Mr. Moteja talked about, it will be very key. I also believe if like Article 201, principles of public finance, and the constitution has exactly explained about the how resources must be used without, without wastage. When you look at the reports of the Auditor General, we have talked a lot of wastage in the resources. And if this article 201, if it is forward to the latter, we are not going to have a problem. Even article 232 about the values and principles of public service, whereby high standards of professional ethics are supposed to be taken into consideration. So ideally, I can see if some of these articles, which focus on the uh, the management of public finances and leadership and integrity. If they are taken into account, we can be there. And in the office of the Auditor General, we have really actually, uh, uh, we have raised the bar, especially when it comes to these issues of corruption, both internal and external. Because even now, any issues which we feel there is need to be audited, we are even doing transfers or audits. And actually, these are both the deterrent and also actually putting the, 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 those who have been found actually culprit into the law. So me, I can see, I have no doubt in my mind, the systems we have set in the office of the other general, because we have computerized everything. We have computerized our audit and we are able to trace we are able to have systems in place whereby even we can be able to see the transaction even through IFMIS. And we are able to raise red flag and we can, the Hotel General can order, let this issue be investigated even before actually some of the things have been finalized. And that's the reason why you have seen most of the reports uh, which are in the print media. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, most of the auditees they are, a bit, they are a bit very careful now, especially when they're handling this. And finally, there's one thing which I want to mention here, especially in the accounting background. Our public sector is purely cash accounting. And if this country is not going to move to accrual accounting, where you can have audit trail, most of the East African countries they have moved to accrue accounting, then corruption, it might be a big problem because cash accounting, there is no more of trail and most of the assets, like a vehicle, it is expensed. But in accrue accounting, you will be able to trace that vehicle regardless of the period it was purchased until it is fully depreciated, even when it is fully de depreciated. Okay. So this accountability, it's very key in my view. The accounting framework, which will be used in public sector, if we move to accrue accounting, I can assure you corruption will be dealt a big blow. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, Abdi, you want to yes, comment I, on that? I, Go I ahead. To, yes, I just wanted to add what uh, um, uh, my colleague said. Uh, in fact, we should never even think whether we will defeat corruption or not. We should be determined to eradicate corruption in Kenya. That should be our slogan. The issue of showing the, uh, indecisiveness and what you call defeatism type, type of uh, attitude is what is killing us. If you have seen, uh, if we have the people, when you see the a few people like the, the guy who was from uh, Masai Mara, uh, uh, what do you call it, whistleblower, uh, when you see people like that, then you will see some hope that there are people, there are few Kenyans who are for. And believe me, uh, we don't have time, but if I could go to some of the, uh, the you know, successes that we did. We have interrupted multi-billion shillings because of good Kenyans who feel this is wrong, and they report. We are able to defeat and able to eradicate Kenya uh, from Kenya. Corruption is only change of attitude, as Mr. Muteti said earlier, and, and we need to show a good example. If me as a parent, I will contribute money on the pretext of prayer they hold it before exams and we're going to give the supervisors so they can allow our children to steal the exam, 
They were not going to get rid of that. Yeah. We, are already, we are already teaching our children. And those are the same people who are going to become the accountants tomorrow because you stole, them, you stole the exam for them by you as a parent. You pay money to the principal that we are going to hold a prayer day. But it's not a prayer day. It's money for actually bribing the supervisors. This is where we want to change. All right. It's, yeah. And if we, if we really have determination, we can get rid of out of this vice. It is not something which God brought for us to live with it mm -hmm. because it's an evil act. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, so really a, a change of attitude is what uh, is required, although that isn't always easy. But uh, in the meantime, uh, because we've got to wrap up soon, uh, Kevin, I'll ask you, what are some of your recommendations um, that you believe can uh, help bolster this fight? Indeed, I think that we need to double our efforts, especially in these COVID-19 times when we need to promote the highest level of uh, lives and livelihoods. And that means that we need to put more on technology. Technology, while it can't solve every problem, can you know, highlight and um, thereby promoting interactivity and openness in addressing some of the challenges that we face. There's a constant uh, requirement for innovation within the EAC context. We are, have a growing consensus by way of ensuring that uh, we are now in the phase of developing recovery of the economy which uh, means that you know, we need to look into the market systems within the context of our economy and ensure that we have as li little wastage as possible and uh, address this challenge collectively. Indeed, the approach that we're taking within the Kenyan context by way of Cliff, promoting that cor cooperation, bringing about multiple stakeholders and bringing an accountability by way of their leadership to bring their networks and structures to bear with this challenge is, is a fascinating innovation. And I, and I do believe that from this social perspective is a solution. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, Alexander, uh, realistically, you know, let's say in the next five years uh, on the 10th commemoration of this African Anti-Corruption Day, where would you like to see Kenya? Well, thank you. I, I would say this. Um, in fact, as we celebrate that 10 years, Kenya should be the leader in this fight. Looking at most African countries, we are one of the very few countries in the world that owes a permanent seat of the UN. For the UN to have identified Gigiri as a potential place to put up whatever we have there, then they must have run a test and engaged the people and the pool of personnel. And this I can say without any fear of contradiction, that we have such a very powerful gene pool of potential persons who not only can inform local discussions and deliberations about how we go about these things, but can be world leaders. If everybody is committed to this fight and they offer themselves diligently and honestly, there is no doubt that we shall conquer the ghost of corruption and slay it. Okay. The problem we have is this. We speak from both ends of the mouth. In the morning, we are saying, you are not fighting corruption, but in the evening, we are busy practicing it. Mm -hmm. So that for our people to realize the change that they so much aspire to see, the first thing should be say no to corruption. Okay. And that will be the game changer. All right. Thanks so, uh, so much, uh, Alexander. Sylvester, your final thoughts. What is your message to Kenyans on this African Anti-Corruption Day? My message is simple. Cooperate with the institutions charged with the fight against corruption and do so honestly. All right. Uh, Sylvester, your uh, remarks to Kenyans? Uh, my remarks to Kenyan is... Um, there is a lot of hope. There's a lot of hope and 
Uh, the fight against corruption, I'm sure it will be won and it will be won squarely. Uh, from the office of the Auditor General, and uh, this is something I can also put across. There are very critical recommendations by parliament. Those recommendations, if they are really implemented, and when you go to those reports, PIC reports, you'll see which agency is supposed to take over this, to do this. But here in Hihant, you will find some of these recommendations have not been acted upon. So if these recommendations can be acted upon, I can tell Kenyans there will be no corruption because parliament has given very fantastic recommendations on our reports. But those reports, as auditors, we just come in and reiterate, we say, although PIC have said X, Y, Z, this has not been done. So there is a lot of hope and it will be won sooner than later. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Sylvester. And uh, finally, um, uh, Dr. Malim, um, how can Kenyans uh, report cases of graft. Okay. Thank you very much. First of all, before I go to the reporting, uh, I, I would like to rejoin our colleagues. We can uh, fight corruption. Let's uh, um, stop politicizing and ethnicizing corruption. Don't come singing, saying that you have, uh, uh, what do you call, accused our, our thief or whatever. Corruption is corruption. Let's fight corruption and we'll be able to, to win the war. As for reporting, we have various um, um, uh, places, as I mentioned, 50 uh, uh, what do you call the Huduma centers, mm -hmm. 11 regional offices uh, which are in the country, our uh, integrity center. We have also um, the online system. If you go to our website, you'll get the telephone numbers there, which are anonymous, and you can also report without being known. Then at the same time, if you are not able to write or whatever, please walk into any of our offices or to any of our agencies who are there and bring the report. We'll be very happy to assist you. All right. And thank finally, you. I just want to say, uh, Kenyans, don't wait for EACC or DCI or whatever to fight corruption. It's a responsibility for each and every one of us. And we thank the media and the Kenyan public for being good partners. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much to all my guests on uh, this day, the African Anti-Corruption Day 2021. Uh, I'm afraid we are out of time, but thanks to uh, the uh, commissioner from the EACC, that is Dr. Abdi Malim. We've also had Alexander Muteti, Senior Assistant at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. Sylvester Kinney, the Deputy Auditor General, Finance Audit Services at the Office of the Auditor General. And also Dr. Kevit Desai, Principal Secretary of the State Department for the East African Community, Ministry of EAC and Regional Development. Thanks so much for joining us and thank you to you for watching. Certainly hope that you have uh, some takeaways from that conversation conversation. That's all for now. Stay tuned though. NTV Gioni is, or rather NTV Weekend is coming up next at seven o'clock and I'll be back at nine o'clock with NTV Weekend Edition. Bye-bye.